Anyone who loves going on cruises must have seen the cruise directors on the ships. Their job is to direct entertainment, chat with guests, and host the shows. This seems like the perfect dream job, making money and traveling on a mobile city. However, there is so much more they have to do than meets the eye. Behind the scenes, they work very hard. Zach from CruiseWeek.tv was able to sit down with Royal Caribbean's Cruise and Susan. She's the director on The Majesty. Take a look and listen to see what her job is all about. Yes, Majesty is my first ship as a cruise director. I was activities manager for about five years oh, wow. before my promotion. Um, so I visited the office in March and went for an audition with uh, some of our VPs and got offered the job. Excellent. So. Was there something you've always wanted to do? Is there something you worked towards, or did you just kind of fall into this? It's for, for my my story is a little bit different than most people because I didn't come through entertainment um, originally when I started with the company. Been with Royal Caribbean for just over twelve years now, but I started as a bar server. So I began oh, wow. <clears throat> working in the food and beverage department. Came on board, saw what the crew staff did, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Yes, that's what I want to do." So I approached some of them, asked them how I would go about it and I started what we call cross-training. So it was an interdepartmental transfer that I went through mm -hmm. from the bar to cruise director staff and then from cruise director staff to activities manager, activities manager to cruise director. <laughs> Excellent. I've noticed I've chatted with a lot of cruise um, director staff. Mm -hmm. uh, great bunch of people. Yes. Uh, so energetic. They work their socks <laughs> off. They will do. I've talked to Mo, I've talked to Juan. It's like they're great people. They really make the cruise special. Very, very yeah. enthusiastic. Yeah. Our team here is fantastic. They, I mean, from morning till night in a three and four day cruise is very tough. It's very tough on the staff because we've got two turnaround days every week mm -hmm. and that's a busy, busy day for everybody, but they manage to keep the momentum and yeah. Just so you're right now you're doing like a four day and then a three day and yes. a four day. So, I'll, so it's seven days a week. <laughs> so obviously we see you introducing shows and doing the belly flop competition. Mm -hmm. um, we see the fun part of it, but what is an app, talk, take me through an average day's work for you, both in front of the guests and behind the scenes. So my day starts off here in my office. I'll come down, check my emails, that's my most important thing of the day. My admin sits just outside my office over here, and my lovely Natalia. Uh, she informs me of uh, what's coming up for that day, what's pending, things that I have to sign. This is please sign and return <laughs> to Cruise Programs Administrator. So I'm responsible for signing off on a lot of things for my team, um, such as expenses which have to be paid back to them, uh, contract adjustments, so on and so forth. So I need to go through all of my paperwork in the morning. We will normally have a meeting at some point throughout the day, whether it's the hotel director's meeting, the steering committee safety meeting, the safety observations and coaching's team meeting. Um, so th normally meetings and things are done in the morning because once we arrive into port, the guests are kind of heading off the ship to enjoy the day. So we have a little bit of time to sit down and get together. And then the rest of my day is planning and making the compasses because obviously we have to prepare the compass every day. Mm -hmm. Things change all the time the yeah, headliners the change the, the, yeah, the so what's going on this is what's what we're producing so it's on a a, file, a design file um on the computer not many people have access to it there's only a few people that can actually physically go in and edit it but the final say for the compass falls down to the cruise director wow. so it's up to the cruise director to proofread everything to check that everything's in place that there's no clashes mm -hmm. and that that's all prepared and good to go and on a three and four day cruise again time is of the essence so we've got to get this produced and that's probably my most important thing for the day then I like to go and out have a little walk around to see how my guests are getting on. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of time on the floor, depending on where we are and what, what kind of day it is. I wander about the pool deck, go up to the rock climbing wall. I always like to pass by Adventure Ocean because the kids fall under my, uh, my supervision as well. So I like to go and see how the kids are getting on in the kids club. Um, pass by the lounge, speak to some of the guests and see how they're going. And then I take a nap. <laughs> in the afternoon. <laughs> That's how you do it. Yeah, it's funny because I've spoken to a lot of your crew staff and I'm like, what do you do on your, your downtime? I nap. It's the number one thing. Everybody naps. So I guess it's like you learn how to do these little cat naps. Yep because you're going, going, going. What time does your day start? It varies. It varies from, from uh, port of call and sea days and so on and so forth. Obviously this morning was a, a tendering to Coco Cay in early 7.30 um, to come down and make sure the tendering process is set up, that the guys don't need any announcements from me. So I have my PA system in the office. I generally just sit 
Mo and my team, Mo's my activities manager, and uh, the crew staff team will be down running the tendering operation. And they kind of call in if they need an announcement from me um, to tell guests that it's busy at that time or it's quiet, so now would be a good time to go. So while I'm here and I'm waiting for the phone calls, that's when I'll check my emails and so on and so forth. Then I went to Coco Cay. Uh, we have our little uh, sweet party over on the island, so I took the tender over just about 12 o'clock. Came back just after one, had some lunch, checked my emails, took a little nap, and then that was me back in at 6 p.m. Oh, wow. Now, um, one of the questions that we've already got coming in is, how many staff do you have? I'm assuming they mean uh, crew staff, not just... Well, for me as the cruise director, I have about 46, 48 people who report to me. And that includes, obviously people see the cruise director staff, but I've got all of the musicians, um, as I said, the Adventure Ocean team, the ones who take care of the kids, they, they report to me as well. All of the technical staff on board, so my broadcast technician who does all the filming, um, and my sound and light tech, my stage and productions manager, we call them the black shirts because that's what they wear. Um, so all of the black shirts report to me as well, along with, as I said, your musicians, my admin, the cruise director staff, and the sports staff. Oh, wow. So it's just it's just under 50, but obviously Majesty of the Seas is a very small ship. That number can go up to 160 if you're talking Oasis and Allure and Harmony, because they have, they've have they obviously got their production cast, they've got their aqua cast, they've got their ice cast, so it just expands with the ship as it goes. So obviously we had an itinerary change on this crew, yes. we switched. What happens when all of a sudden you get that call from the captain or home office and say, hey, you're not going there, figure it out? Yeah, so that's when everybody's got to hit the ground running. And normally the hotel director will call me um, once he gets the announcement from the captain. Um, and it's all hands on deck. Everybody in to make sure we can reprint the compass. Mm -hmm. So, and obviously that involves input from everybody, from my activities manager, my stage and productions manager, my broadcast team, Adventure Ocean, we're gonna obviously add in some additional activities. So the priority is to get in and get the compass redone for what's relevant for that day. So that the guests know what's going on, if it's bad weather, so on and so forth, we wanna make sure we're prioritizing activities inside the ship. If we know that the weather's gonna be nice, then obviously we wanna maximize the space outside. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, I know, it's, I, I saw that change and I was like, oh, I can just imagine them running like crazy. It is, it's just, it, you know, the team works so well together that it's actually not as bad as it seems. It is like go, go, go. So when we when we changed on, on Tuesday, um, I got the call at 7.15. Mm -hmm. um, that was the hotel director who was like, Susan, it's a sea day, we've got to redo the planner. But that obviously that has a knock-on effect because then we had to change the day four compass to reflect the fact that we were going to Coco Cay and not to a sea day. Alright, now some people think that the cruise director is the highest position on a ship with guests, but it's not, is it? No, absolutely then not. You report to someone else, right? I report directly to the hotel director. Okay. So cruise directors are classed as what we call three stripe officers, or division heads. Um, and we all report directly to the hotel director, who's in charge of the hotel department. Obviously the captain is the big, big boss, and then it splits. Uh, into hotel and marine. Hotel director being obviously in charge of the hotel department. Oh, excellent. Um, somebody's asked, um, how long are you on the ship and do you rotate? So how long, how long is your contract? My contract you is four months on, two months off. And right now, myself and the other cruise director assigned to Majesty are working on a rotation. So I do four months, then he comes in and does two months when I go on vacation, and then he goes home. So we're, the two of us are scheduled for Majesty as per now. Um, sometimes it'll work where three ships have, uh, two ships, sorry, have three cruise directors. So one will do four months, one will do four months, and then the other one will do two and two. Nice. To, to do the relief between the two vacations. You can go to any ship at any point. The, the head office try and base it on itinerary, demographic, language skills. Um, so, obviously, being from the UK, English is my one and only language. Um, so it's not likely that I'm going to get sent to South America. Um, you know, ship sailing out of uh, Spain and Italy in the Med because we get a lot of international guests then. Um, so they would utilise people because we have a lot of cruise directors that speak several languages uh, very fluently. Um, obviously the same with the Asian market now. Um, it's unlikely that I would be sent there based on my language skills, but it does happen. Some We've, we've had English speaking cruise directors who've gone on stage with a translator and it works like that. So, But you can go anywhere, any ship at any time. 
Yeah. Um, do you prefer the longer cruises or the shorter cruises when it comes to the guests? That's that's a hard one. I do like the three and four day cruises because I genuinely feel like people just come on board to have a good time. Mm -hmm. It's always fun. It's fast paced. You know, we don't ever have time to sit and think, oh, I wonder what's going to happen because it's go, go, go. On a three and four day cruise, we have to put pretty much the same number of activities and events in as what you would find on a seven day cruise. So we're very, very oh, busy. Wow. Um, you know, like you would just find them slightly more spread out on a seven day run. Um, so I do like the short cruises. I, I, like, I like the pace and I like the fun. Um, but I'm not... I'm not against anything in particular. <laughs> so, what do you do on the ship on your time off, apart from sleep? <laughs> um, if we're on board, most of the crew, if they have time off in the port, they will go out. People do what they normally do, they go shopping. Once we get into Port Canaveral, everybody hits up Walmart. We've got to get that done. Um, people go and eat a lot. We'll go outside and eat. Uh, phone calls, internet, anything like that, anywhere that's got Wi-Fi, you'll find the crew when they're outside. If you're on board, generally you are napping or tidying your cabin. Um, especially for like me and my team, we have so many costume changes in a day. <laughs> so when you come in at the end of the night, it's just a sea of clothes. So uh, we've got to put them away at some point. Um, but yeah, if, if it's in a port of call, most people you'll find them getting off the ship. If they're staying on board, they're most likely. So do you have a clothing allowance for all your costume changes? No. No? No. Oh, so they're all... You pick yes, them and they're all, <laughs> all purchased by me. <laughs> Got it. Um, Sam asks, is there a ship in the future that would be your dream ship to work on as a cruise director? Ooh. <laughs> I don't think so. A lot of people think that your experience on a contract is based on the ship. Mm. I oh, tend to find yeah. it's the team that makes or breaks it for you. So good teams always to be found and I, th I think that's more important than the, the actual ship itself. Coming back from a break, you might often find some of the teams change yes. because of their contracts. Oh yeah, that happens all the time. How how do you like, hit the ground running with a new team when you haven't built up that chemistry yet? It's unusual, when you've only been gone for two months, it's unusual that everybody will have changed. Right. There'll be a few key personnel. Um, but. Again, everybody's so used to this fluid environment when people come and go and come and go all the time. So it's not it's not new for people. Also, I think people that work on ships have a very unique approach to new people coming in. Like it's just relationships are developed very quickly on board. And I mean like working relationships yeah. because we're together 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the duration of our contract. So. It's, it's not, I don't find it challenging, coming back in. Yeah, you become a family. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we take care of each other. Universal. Yep. It's like we're a family and we work together. Yeah. So talking about family, do you, um, do you have family? I have a mother, father, a brother, mm -hmm. sister-in-law, but they're at home. Do they get to come and visit? They, they do. I'm hoping my parents are coming out in January, actually. Um, my brother is expecting twins. Uh, very very soon uh, so they're waiting for the babies to come and then they're gonna come out in January to get a break oh. from the babies <laughs> I think um, but yeah uh, my my partner works on board with me we've been together for six years he actually works in the casino um, so did you meet on board yes we did we did we met actually my very very first contract that was the first time I ever met him and then we, we got separated ships and then we came back together excellent um, Sam also asks, as a cruise director, is it your call uh, when the formal nights work, are worked into the cruise or is that planned by head office? It's, it's a discussion, but it's pretty standard that the formal night will fall on the first sea day or the earliest possible sailing so that people have time to get ready and enjoy you know, what goes on on a formal evening, get their pictures done, go to the spa, have some dancing. So it was, it's normally either the first sea day or the earliest possible sailing that we can manage. That's a good thing because I never knew about that early possible sailing. Yeah, well some itineraries you know that your, your first sea day is not going to be until day four or day five which is a little bit late to be having your first formal night. For us on, on the weekend cruise it's a challenge because we we only have three days and Nassau is day two and we don't sail until midnight so but that's the only day that we have to do it because you can't do formal night on the last day or on the first day so yeah. 
it's automatically going to be on on the second day. So it, it's normally figured out in in those terms. Right. So who comes up with the, the shows and the games? Is that planned by you guys, or is that like? at a corporate meeting with all the cruise directors? A lot of our events are produced by our shoreside partners. Mm. Um, they're, obviously everybody adapts them to suit their own style, um, but you'll generally find th the standard ones throughout most of our ships. Right. If you have somebody who has, in your team, who has a particular talent um, and can you know, come up with something new, by all means, like we, we have uh, full reign to go ahead with that. Some things are restricted, like for example, we have some people uh, in the cruise director staff who teach Zumba, but they have to be Zumba certified in order to offer it on board. But a lot of them have gone out on their own and you know had their Zumba certification so that they can come and teach it on board. But the things like that you'll find, like the Quest, the Love and Marriage mm -hmm. Game Show, Finish That Lyric, these are all produced elements, but obviously everybody puts their own little spin on them. Yeah, we'll look forward to the Quest Game Show. Yes. They don't know about it yet. <laughs> Exciting! I can't wait as well. Then. Yeah, it was um, it was fun when I was on Oasis three weeks ago. I was working Drew on it. Yeah. I was on the floor with that, and then great, great, loved it. So really. Looked it's the one that. thing that I I miss on this class of ship is Studio B for the Quest because it's such a great venue for yes. it. Um, <laughs> but we we work with what we have. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Uh, what about humorous moments? What's the like? funniest things you've seen from guests <laughs> that you can tell. <laughs> Do you know, it's it's more what people will approach you and ask you. Like some things just, you know, you take a step back and you're like, seriously? I had a woman ask me if it was salt water that was in the pool. So I responded yes, because it was a salt water pool. She was like, thank you, now I understand why there's waves in it. And I was like, it, like, is she, is she serious right now? Like, does she think that that salt water just moves on its? I don't know. Like, it, it was just a really, really bizarre, bizarre thing. I know. I read. Um, I've been reading a lot of the forums and stuff like that. And some of the complaints, you just look at them, going, "Are you serious?" You know, it's like I want to refund because it was too cold. The weather. And then, you know, <laughs> the weather's always our biggest challenge. But some people like it, it ruins their vacation. It's a vacation. I know. It's fun. A wise man once told me a rainy day on vacation beats a sunny day at work, so that's my <laughs> philosophy. Okay. Uh, another person asks, how do you combat tiredness with such a full schedule on uh, next to no sleep? Lots uh, and lots of coffee. <laughs> lots of coffee. I mean, I'm, I'm on day three or, or day four, and day I mean, four, I just want exhausted. to fall in bed and sleep. And I, yeah, you know, I've been trying to follow these guys around and camera. Yeah. I mean, and I'm not doing anywhere near as much as you're doing. You know, d how we look at it is, we just save up all of our weekends and get them at the end of our contract. Oh. <laughs> so it's just we just power through, and we help each other out. You know, if somebody's like really having a day where they're like, I'm really suffering, I'm really, really tired, you know, we'll try and switch them out and get somebody in to, to cover for them and so on and so forth. Um, not what, so much in my position. What about covering? What happens if you get sick and you've got all this time? If I get sick, yes. then it will be Mo's job ah. to step into to my role to take over. Mm. Um, when, when you audition through the company for the activities manager role, you actually do the same audition that you do for your cruise director counterpart because they have to know that if the cruise director goes down, that that person is able to step up and take care of the program. Mm -hmm. So, gotcha. that's and what would happen. How working with you? Mo has been working with me, but I just came back from vacation. He was here with me my last contract, but I actually worked with Mo 12 years ago when I was a bar server. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I've seen him many, many times throughout, throughout my time on, uh, on Royal. So there's a lot of competition for the cruise director job. It seems like that dream job that everybody's trying to get to. I don't... I never saw it like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, w I, I guess for me, I was quite content in my role as activities manager. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was more kind of like, when well, when it's my time, it'll be my time. And then I got the email to say, hey, it's your time. Oh, so, wow. Um, so nice. <laughs> yeah, they. I mean, when there's movement, you know, I mean, obviously people retire, people move on, and um, so on and so forth. So when there when there's movement and gaps come available, then obviously they will reach out to the activities managers and so on and so forth to see who who's you know ready for the next step and willing to audition. 
time. So talking about retirement, what what would you do when you retire from this stuff? I or do you have plan no on doing it for idea. a long time yet? I, I don't <laughs> plan on giving up anytime soon. Um I have no idea what I will do. I don't know first of all I I don't know how I'll adjust to life back on land. Oh, I've been man. doing it for such yeah. a long time. Um but you know, people do it and people do it successfully. I'm sure when when it's my time. I always said when I stopped enjoying it, then I would leave. Mm -hmm. So right now, <laughs> I'm still it. enjoying it. So <laughs> there's no need yeah. for me to go anywhere. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, somebody's asked, why don't they have sweet tea on the ship? And I don't drink tea, so I don't know if they do or not. Um, <laughs> that's that's one for the food and beverage yeah. side. <laughs> I really, I'd I would figure it so that people that don't want sweet tea. Yeah, I think so you can just sugar, add it. Yeah. yeah, I would figure that, but apparently it's some sort of southern thing. They like it brewed with the sugar in. I, I've heard it, that it is something I can reach out to to find out if it's been changed recently. But again, I'm not a I'm not yeah. a tea drinker. Uh, yeah, you yeah like me, you like your heart with milk and sugar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Or coffee. Uh, yeah, or very strong yeah. coffee. What do you miss uh, most from home, excluding, of course, um, family and Wi-Fi? <laughs> <laughs> my dogs. Aww. I miss my dogs. Um, just getting up and just going out for a nice long walk with them. And I really, really miss eating when you're hungry, as opposed to when it's yeah. feeding time. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, sometimes you go to the mess at lunchtime, you're like, I'm really not hungry, but I know if I don't eat now, then I'm not going to get anything until you know till it reopens at 6 p.m. Or cooking, cooking in general, just making something that you want as opposed to what's there, you know. Okay. Yeah, they ask what kind of dogs do you have. I have, I have chocolate Labradors too. Oh, and they are parents. They're my brothers. Oh, okay. my brother. Yeah, because we could say you probably. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> do you have an actual place on land and a yes. on land? Yes. Yes. Okay. I've got an apartment back in Scotland. Got it, because I know spending so much time at sea, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know if it was cost effective to even have something. Uh, I, it is and it isn't. Yeah. There's nothing worse, because we, we travel all the time and we're constantly packing, there's nothing worse than having to go home and live out of a suitcase or be like moving around and, you know, when, before I had my place, I was, you know, a couple of days with my mum and dad and a couple of days with my brother and then I would go and see some friends and think, mm -hmm. you know, it's just something, it's just nice to have a base to just leave my stuff and know that I can come home to it. Mm -hmm. hey, so, what do you do on your time off? I mean, you're like your vacation off the ship. Um, <laughs> activities wise. Activities, yeah, I do travel. Um, I'll always like to, to go somewhere, but as we were discussing before, like so many friends all over the world, so we try and, you know, uh, meet up with people who are, who are home at the at the same time. Um, I spend a lot of time with my family, a lot of time with my family. I do a lot of shopping. <laughs> you like to shop. Why I am I in that? In you know, I've area. spoken to quite a lot of directors that I've got them on my Facebook, and they all say that. Shopping number one thing. Just because our time is so <laughs> limited when we're on board, mm -hmm. and you've, you've kind of like expelled your entire wardrobe by the end of your contract, yeah. so when you, when you go home, you've got to replenish everything. <laughs> so it's like, go, go, go. Yeah. Um, do, you have it, do you have internet access, as in like the same as the guests, like an unlimited package, or do you pay by the minute? Do you know, I've never bought a crew internet package in my life. So I genuinely don't know the answer to that. I've never bought one. So you don't use the internet? I don't know. I don't I don't use the Wi-Fi on board oh, wow. because I have internet in my office and in my cabin. Oh, okay. So I, because of the, the work that I need to do, so I've got a workstation. But like for the crew members, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they have packages available, but I genuinely don't know how much it is. Oh, okay. So you do have access to the internet? Oh, yes, I, yes, I absolutely. Like, apart from work related. Oh, no, 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 okay. no, no. <laughs> Well, I, I, can, I can go. I can go on my my computer in my cabin. Great. And then the final question, of course, is what advice would you give to somebody who's never been on a cruise before and thinking about going? Don't overthink things because a lot of people worry about things that really aren't relevant. Like we were talking about people who worry that they're going to get seasick. You're not going to get seasick. And just ask questions when you. As soon as you come on board, ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions. Our teams are so friendly and willing to make people's experience as memorable as possible. So tell us what you're expecting, tell us what you would like to see, tell us what you would like to do and ask as many questions as you can. Then that way like, we'll be able to make sure that we do everything possible to make sure that you have a great time. Oh, 